Sia Pianjana Shalakaya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvisesha Sanyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Vancha kalpa terubhyascha kripa sindhu paevacha patita nam pavane bio vaishnavi bio namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shri vasade gor bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 51, entitled Mochi Kunda Delivered. <laughs> Mm. All right, so Krishna came out of the city, Mathura, and Kalayavna, there was this demon, Kalayavna, who had come with a big army, many millions of soldiers, they'd all come to attack Mathura. And Lord Krishna came out on his own to see them. So Kalayavana had never seen Krishna before. And when he saw Krishna, then he, he saw he's so beautiful, he's so good looking. And he was dressed in yellow clothes and, and Lord Krishna just came walking right through them. And he was, it was just like the moon in the sky passing through the clouds. So Kalayavana saw how Lord Krishna had the mark of Srivatsa on his chest and he had also the Kastuba gem around his neck. These are signs only worn by the Supreme Lord himself. But Kalayavana didn't see him, didn't see Krishna in his two-armed form. He saw Krishna as Vishnu. He saw him with four arms. But he saw how he was very, very good looking, he had very blissful face, very happy, and uh, he was smiling, and he had uh, special earrings on, sharp-shaped earrings. So Kalayavna had never seen Krishna before, but he'd heard about him from Narada Muni. And 
and he could recognize all the special features of Krishna. He has beautiful jewels on his chest and he had a beautiful garland of lotus, lotus flowers around his neck. And so he, when he saw him, he could understand this must be Vasudev, because everything he'd heard about from Narada, he saw there in the form of Lord Krishna. And he saw Kalayavna saw Krishna was moving through his army, but he didn't carry any weapons in his hands, and he didn't have any chariot. He was simply walking on foot. So Kalayavna had come, he wanted to fight Krishna. But he wanted to fight him on a fair way. He, he, so he thought he would also walk, he would also go on foot, and he also didn't take any weapon with him. But, so, but Kalayavna came after Krishna, he wanted to capture Krishna and fight him. But Krishna didn't pay any attention to Kalayavana. He just ignored him. So Kalayavana came after him and Kalayavana was running after him trying to capture Krishna, but he could never capture Krishna. Krishna cannot even be, even if you move at the speed of the mind, you cannot capture Krishna. If you want to capture Krishna, you have to have devotion. But Kalayavna, he had no devotion. He was not a devotee. So Kalayavna began to run very fast. He is thinking, I will get, I will catch Krishna, I will capture him. But he couldn't capture Krishna, even though he ran so fast. And Krishna led him all the way up a mountain and he went into a, he went into the cave of a hill. So Kalayavna thought Krishna was afraid of him and he thought he was trying to run away from him. And he said to him, Oh Krishna, I thought you were a hero. Why are you running away from me? Fight me. Think of the name of your family. You keep up you should keep up the tradition of your family. You should fight. You should you should show your bravery. So 
But Kaliyavana was not free from all of his sinful reactions. He'd done a lot of sinful things. So in order to capture Krishna, to come to Krishna, you have to be without sin. So Kaliyavana could never get Krishna. จับคุณคริชนาได้เพราะว่าถ้าก่อนที่เราจะสามารถคุณสมบัติที่จะจับคุณคริชนาเนี่ยจะต้องเป็นอิสระจากมวลทินทางวัตถุหรือชีวิต
So this Kali Yavane was very proud. He thought he was so strong. And so when he saw the men laying on the floor, he thought it was Krishna and he kicked him very hard. And then the man who was laying, sleeping there, he woke up and he, he woke up and he opened his eyes and he began to look around and when he saw Kalayavana, then immediately from the man's eyes, fire came out and it burned Kalayavana to ashes. แล้วพอคาลยาวนาเตะเข้าไปอย่างแรงเนี่ยก็ทําให้ชายผู้ที่นอนหลับอยู่เนี่ยตื่นขึ้นมาพอเขาตื่นขึ้นมาเขาก็
So once he asked, because he, once he'd, he'd been fighting a lot against the demons for a long time, so King Muchi Kunda wanted to retire from fighting and take rest. So Kartikeya told Muchikunda, he said, yes, he said, you, you sacrificed everything for the sake of the demigods. And you had your own kingdom, and you didn't have any enemies, but you left it all to come to fight for the demigods. So because you've been away from the kingdom for a long time, the demons, on behalf of the demigods, because you've been no, because you've been away from your kingdom for a long time, fighting the demons, all of your family, your queen and your children and your relatives, everybody has died. They've all gone away. They're, they're not there anymore. The time has taken them away. So Kartikeya told him, he said, if you go to your home, there's nobody there. There's no one living there because time has destroyed everything. And so he told the influence of time takes away everything, makes it, 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 no one can stop the influence of time. Just like an, 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 someone may capture a lion and he will tame it, you see, it's, it's the same way, time also adjusts things according to its own will. Nobody can nobody can conquer time. So Lord Krishna was talking to Muchikunda and he, he he told him, he said, you can ask any benediction. Oh no, sorry, not Lord Krishna. This is Kartikeya. Kartikeya was talking to Muchikunda. So Kartikeya is a demigod. So he asked Muchikunda, he said, you can ask for any benediction, but not liberation, because we cannot give you liberation. We're only demigods. If you want, liberation can only be given by the Supreme Lord, Vishnu. And Vishnu is also Krishna or Makunda, so he can give you liberation. Pakistana 
หรือว่ามุกุนดะนั่นเองค่ะท่านมีชื่อว่ามุกุนดะแปลว่าผู้ที่สามารถให้อิสรภาพหลุดพ้น So King Muchikunda had not slept for many years, so he'd been fighting for many years, so he was very tired. So when Kartikeya asked him to take a benediction, he just he said. I, I just want to be able to sleep now. And he said, "Please give me the power that by my that if anybody disturbs me when I sleep, then when I wake, if they wake me up when I open my eyes, I will burn them to ashes." บอกว่าถ้าเกิดท่านอยากจะมอบพรพิเศษให้กับข้าเนี่ยข้าอยากได้พรประการที่ว่าข้าจะนอนอยู่แล้วใครผู้ใดก็แล้วแต่ที่มารบกวนการนอนของข้าหรือว่าทำให้ข้าต้องตื่นขึ้นมาขอให้ข้าเนี่ยสามารถสังหารเขาผู้นั้นได้ด้วยไฟที่มาจากดวงตาของข้า So k a r t i k e y agreed he said yeah all right I give you that benediction you should have a good rest Because Muchi Kunda was worried, he thought maybe Indra, King Indra, will come and ask me to fight again. So he got that benediction, so Indra wouldn't disturb him. ต่อสู้อีกก็เลยบอกว่าก็เลยขอพรนี้เลยเพื่อพระอินทร์จะไม่กล้าด้วย So it was k a r t i k e y who gave that benediction to Muchikunda that he could burn someone to ashes อันนั้นเนี่ยก็เป็นพรชนิดพิเศษที่ k a r t i k e y เนี่ยให้กับกษัตริย์ Muchikunda เพื่อเขาจะได้พักผ่อน So after Kalyavna was burned to ashes then Krishna appeared So much uh, Krishna had actually come to the cave to deliver Muchikunda. Krishna knew about Muchikunda being there asleep. So he wanted Muchi Kunda to be awakened, and he wanted him to uh, to meet Krishna. He want, Krishna wanted them to meet. So Krishna arranged that Kalyavna would come there and wake him up, and then he would get burned to ashes. So Krishna, he didn't want to kill Kalyavna. He got Muchikunda to kill Kalyavna for him. So Lord Krishna then came before Muchi Kunda, and the king saw Lord Krishna dressed in nice yellow clothes with the k u s t u b a gem and the mark of Sri Vats. Krishna came in a forearm form. 
คริสตันเนี่ยทรงปรากฏต่อหน้ากระสับด้วยรูปสี่ก่อนรูปลักษณ์สี่ก่อนของเรา With this nice garland around his neck and looking very handsome, very beautiful. มีพวงมาลัยแล้วก็พระองค์ทรงดูสง่างามมาก So when Mochi Kunda saw him, then Mochi Kunda was very attracted. He could understand he's a great personality. And when Mochi Kunda saw him, Mochi Kunda ก็รู้สึกว่าดึงดูดมากมากแล้วก็รู้ว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นบุคลิกภาพผู้ยิ่งใหญ่ And he saw that Lord Krishna in his forearm form, he was like a young boy. Although he's the oldest of all, he's like a young boy, and he moves just like a, a fresh, like a young deer. He's very lively and active. So when Mochi Kunda saw Krishna, he wondered, "Who is he? What's his identity?" So he was Mochi Kunda was very humble, and he became he came in front of Lord Krishna. So Mochi Kunda asked Lord Krishna. He said, "How is it you came into this cave in the mountain, and who are you?" And he said, "I can see your feet are soft like a lotus flower." How could you walk in the forest where there's all stones and thorns? So Mochi Kunda asked Krishna, "Are you the supreme personality of Godhead?" And Mochi Kunda asked Krishna. Can I consider you are one of the great demigods, like the sun god or the moon god or Indra? Or are you the deity in charge of some other planet? Mochi Kunda knew every planet has somebody in charge. There's a deity of, in charge of each planet. He was not ignorant like people today. So, because Muchi Kunda was a pure devotee, so Muchi Kunda could immediately understand that Lord Krishna had appeared before him. He knew that this. Form of Krishna. This was not just some deity in charge of one one material planet. He must be the supreme Lord in charge of everything. So Mochi Kunda thought he must be Lord Vishnu. And he could see in the cave, in the cave, it should be dark, but because of the effulgence coming from the body of the Lord, the whole cave was lit up. 
แล้วก็มอชปุนเนอร์ก็สังเกตอีกอย่างหนึ่งก็คือความจริงถ้ำเนี่ยมันจะต้องมืดมากๆแต่เป็นเพราะว่าความสว่างสวัยจากภาวะระกายกองโรคเนี่ยมันทําให้ทั้งถ้ำเนี่ยสว่างสวัยไปหมด And Mochi Kunda knew that wherever the Lord is present by His name and quality and form, so there cannot be any darkness of ignorance. So Mochi Kunda was eager to know who is who, about the identity of Lord Krishna. So he said to him. He said that if you think I, Muchi Kunda says to Krishna, he said, if you think I am fit to know your identity, please can you tell me who you are and what is who is your parents? Muchi Kunda will say that he will say that if you think that Muchi Kunda is fit. ควรค่าที่จะรู้เกี่ยวกับตัวท่านว่าท่านเนี่ยเป็นใครมาจากไหนแล้วพ่อแม่ของท่านเป็นใครก็ได้โปรดบอกค่าทีเถิด But m o c h i k u n d a said first of all I will tell you who I am นะบุชกุนนะก็จะบอกว่าแต่ว่าก่อนที่ท่านจะพูดเนี่ยเดี๋ยวข้าจะบอกท่านก่อนว่าข้าเนี่ยเป็นใคร Because if I if he thought if I don't tell you who I am I've no right to ask who you are So King Muji Kunda told Krishna, "I, I belong to the. I am from the, the family of King Iksvaku." But I am not as great as him. I'm not as great as my forefather. My name is Muchikunda. My father's name is Mandata. And my grandfather was a great king called Yuvanaspa. And he said, "I was I was very tired because I was resting for many thousands of years." And all the limbs of my body became slack. I lost all my energy. But now I was I got woke up by that man who kicked me. So actually, I didn't want to get up, but he kicked me. So for that, I, for because he was so offensive. He got burnt. That's why he got burnt to ashes. But Muchikunda said, "I think that I'm lucky because now I'm able to see you. Because he woke me up, now I'm able to see you, and you're you're very beautiful." But he said, Muji Kunda said, he said because of your effulgence coming from your body, I am not able to see you properly. So I understand you're quite fit to be worshipped by all people. Ah, he understands that you're quite fit to be worshipped by all people. 
So then Lord Krishna answered the king. He said, my dear king, he said, it's almost impossible to tell you about my birth and my appearance and my disappearance. And Lord Krishna says to him, he said, maybe you know that Anantadev has unlimited mouths and for an unlimited period of time he's been trying to tell everything about me, about my name and fame and qualities and activities. But still, he has not been able to finish. ค่าท่านน่าจะรู้จักท่านที่ชื่อว่าอนันตเดชได้เขาเนี่ยมีปากนับจำนวนไม่ถ้วนแล้วก็จำนวนปากที่นับไม่ถ้วนนั้นเน
So Krishna tells Muchikunda, you are my great devotee. And just to show your causeless mercy, I have appeared in the cave. And Krishna tells Muchikunda, he said, in your previous life, you acted as my great devotee and prayed for my mercy. So I've come to fulfill your desire. Now you can be my devotee. And then Krishna tells Mujikunda, you can ask any benediction you want from me. So at that time Mujikunda remembered about Gargamuni. Gargamuni told him that in the future you will meet Lord Krishna. And that Lord Krishna, he's the personality of Godhead. He's non different from Lord Narayan. And so then Mujikunda heard that, then he fell at the feet of Lord Krishna. And he begins to offer prayers to Lord Krishna. So, uh, he said, All living entities on this planet are your energy, are under the control of your energy. And they're all in, under the influence of the power of illusion. They're thinking they're the body and they don't worship you. They don't worship the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And they don't know the benefit of surrendering to your lotus feet. And they're very attached to material life, to, to society and friendship and love. And the result of all these things is more suffering. So everybody, whether a man or a woman, they're attached to the material world. And they all cheat one another. They're all cheating each other. They don't realize how fortunate they are to have the human body. They waste it. And they're attached to material activities. 
the society, friendship and love. They're like foolish animals which fall into a, the bottom of a well. They cannot get out. And so the, the, the animal falls in the well, he'll just die, can never get out. So the same way some people are so foolish that they get they get so attached to the material world, and their family and their friends, and they, they can never get free from the attachment. So the result is they simply die. They don't do anything useful with their life. So Mochi Kunda said, that was my position. I'm like that. I'm the same. I'm a foolish person. I just wasted my time for no, no benefit. But because I was a king, I was very proud and I thought I was better than ordinary people. Uh, the ordinary man, he thinks, this is my body and this is my family. But Mochikunda said, I wanted to be the master of the whole world. I thought the, I'm the controller of the whole world. So uh, Muchikunda said, I had very strong attachment to the material body. And I was only thinking about my home and my wife and my children and money. And I wanted to control the world. So I was so attached to these thoughts to enjoy the material life. So I wasted my life for no benefit. And as I, as I got older, I began, I, I was thinking more about my body, my material body. The body is just a bag with bones and flesh. And, and I was thinking I'm the king of all the human society. And I traveled around the world with all my soldiers, with my army and all my chariots and elephants and horses. So I was so proud. I was, I, but I could not find out. I could not find out 
where you are, where the Supreme Lord is, where you were. I know you always sit in my heart. You're the most intimate friend. But I didn't care about you. So it was my fault. So Muchi Kunda says, I think I think just like me, most people they 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 don't care about spiritual life. And they're always full of anxiety. They're always thinking what what is to be done? What should we do? What is next? So we're very absorbed in material thought. But this these all these thoughts that this is all unimportant in the time of death. So you are the Supreme Lord and you decide when we have to leave the body. Krishna gives the example. Oh, Muchikunda gives the example. He says, just like a big black snake swallows up a, a little rat. So the same way, the body, this body, which I think is, I'm the king, this was, and it's always, my body's always decorated with ornaments, and I'm always desiring life, luxury living, and people to serve me, and I'm on a chariot pulled by beautiful horses, and in this way I'm trying to enjoy material life. But that same body is under, the, although I'm the king, that same body is under the influence of time and it gets old and one day it will be eaten, it will become the food for the worms and for insects. แต่ว่าตอนนี้เนี่ยเป็นก็เนื้อมาจากร่างกายของค้าแต่ร่างกายของค้าเนี่ยมันก็ต้องมันก็อยู่ภายใต้อิทธิพลของการเวลาที่ห
And when it becomes ashes, then you'll see different kinds of worms and insects also come there from it. So this way King Murti Kunda is describing the material body. Okay. We'll stop here today. We'll finish it next time. It's a long time. Yes. Any questions? Yes, Okay, so let her. Bhakti, Bhakta, Kittikon. Hare Krishna Kulu Mahalad. Dandavat Panam, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna Kap Mataji. Hare Krishna. I have a question about the purpose of the Sattva. I have a question about the his question is uh, regarding the things that uh, regarding the things that we offer to the Lord can we offer like kasturi and purse you know purse gurmash the one that we can get from ocean what is it a, a perfume uh, the decoration ornament oh a decoration yeah, yeah some something that might uh, you know make out of animal thing animal like that, oh. can we use that? Oh. Like silk, silk, the curtain, the cloth, silk. Like, like silk, yeah, silk porn. Mm -hmm. Can we use? Can we use it? Yes. Yeah, well, we do, yeah. Can? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how you know? Uh, and pearl. Pearls. Oh yeah, pearls. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. We use them to make neck decoration necklace. We offer them to Krishna. You you get silk, you can get silk which is non violent, ahimsa silk. You wait till the silkworm dies on its own. When the silkworm gets old, it dies. Then you can take the silk cocoon. That's called a ahimsa silk. But usually we just use cotton. We prefer to use cotton. Cotton is more natural. Silk, silk can be very hot, but cotton is cool.
and perils. We take perils from the sea, but you also get synthetic perils. You don't have to get the, the real one from the sea. They're very expensive and rare. We get synthetic perils. From the devotee. Um, so some ladies, some ladies, they like to wear pearls for the necklace, but we we like to offer pearl to Krishna, to the deity, to decorate Krishna. Okay. Okay, Let's see what does he do. Uh, I understand, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you, thank you for. You are you are best explaining and direction. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I need to ask him about uh, benefit of Tunchi. So as we know about our funeral of Vaishnav, we put Tunchi limb and leaf on the body before the body burns. So how about um material person? If um I can put tun chili man leaf on the body of fun um of uh, my little body or the people as I know, um can they get um, the benefit or something like that, Guru Maharaj? Well, do they want the benefit? They have to want the benefit, you see. If you put it totally there, maybe they get the benefit, but maybe they don't want to be devotee. Just like sometimes, you know, people get the chance to be devotees, but they don't want to be devotee. So you may put totally there for your relative, and next life they may get the chance to be a devotee. But they think, I don't want to be devotee. Why? I don't want Krishna. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, I heard some story, I, I don't know where it is, I don't remember, about um, Tunji can, I mean, relieve the sinful. Mm -hmm. How about that, Guru Maharaj? Yes, can. Can relieve the sinful. It can do. Um, Okay, I, I understand. But mm -hmm. do, do they want to give up the sin? Some people, they don't want to give up the sin. <laughs> they like, um, yeah. they like sin. They like to do bad things. They don't want to stop. Uh, yes, because they are enjoy. <laughs> yes. Be because they're sin Somebody. because they're stupid. They're not because they're stupid, because they, they like to enjoy sinful activity, they're stupid, that's all. Not that they're enjoying. Yeah, they think they're enjoying, but actually they're suffering. Uh, yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. And they'll suffer more, because they do so many sin, so they will suffer more. Okay, Guru Maharaj, then conclusion about, about this is mean if if I um, put the Tunshi Lim and leaf to their body is mean um, they will uh, release by uh, release sinful by by Tunshi leaf 
right? But um, they will got benefit um, the next life. Maybe uh, they will be devotee, just like that, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, they can get benefit mm. like that, but they may not want mm. to be devotee. That's the problem. Okay. 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 Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your explanation. Thank you, Guru. Okay. Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, any other questions tonight? Mm. Nope. No more questions? Yogita, any question? Yogita uh, Madhi. No. Hare Krishna Gurdwe. Yes. Please take some out of the this Mm-hmm. Really surprising. You could really predict my heart. Good, no. <laughs> Dev, actually, I do have a question, um, but I feel stupid asking that question, really. Um, just hearing about, uh, you know, Kalyavana, and I was thinking, Gurudev, he could recognize the Lord with the Kastuba mark on his chest, that this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but yet he was going to fight with him, same thing with all of us on earth, Gurudev. I mean, we hear about the Lord's pastime so very many times our entire life, so often, every other day of the week. And despite of that, oh, Govinda, I don't know how many mistakes continue to happen. And uh, I don't know, Gurudev, it seems so, we are making ourselves slow, it seems, but at times really don't know what to do about it. just was thinking about that. Okay, that people are ignorant, they don't know Lord Krishna. Huh? No, I mean even like for example all of us, me particularly, despite of knowing Lord Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but there's still a bit of this fear in the heart, Gurudev. I, you know, so many experiences in life, they've been so fearful that something happens and that fear takes over. Instead of telling myself that, oh, Lord Krishna is there, you needn't worry. You know, he's there to protect you, but no, fear takes hold in the heart. So I, I really, every time I tell myself, no, it's okay, chant Hare Krishna, you will purify in time. But so many years, Gurudev, and still that, you know, the fear bit takes hold in the heart. That means the belief is not yet firm enough. The faith is not completely firm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's a very strong point because I was just talking to my mother downstairs, Gurudev, on this, and I was telling her it's amazing, but I still don't have faith on the Lord. So, I mean, I don't know, Gurudev, I feel so bad. You know, I mean, so many years, so many experiences, and he's protected me heavily, but still, why is it that I'm still giving place to fear in the heart? That means I'm still not having enough faith in Lord Krishna. Govinda, I feel mm -hmm. so bad. What can I do about that, Guru? They really, I mean, don't really understand. Well, well, we get faith with transcendental knowledge. As you hear more transcendental knowledge, as we hear more about the pastimes of Lord Krishna, so we should develop mm -hmm. more and more faith. And you associate with people who have faith, that will also give you faith, if you get the proper association to us mm. with devotees and you hear transcendental knowledge, so your faith should be increasing every moment, more and more. Mm. And you just have to go on. Of course, we will always think, oh, I don't have faith, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless. That's 
maybe your humility. I mean, I see you have a lot of faith. You have a lot of faith. You like to go to temple. You're always thinking of Krishna and serving your deity. You do have a lot of faith. You can't say you don't have faith. But you're being very humble. So that's good. We should be humble. Of course, devotees, we should be humble. And we should always think I'm... The more, you see, the more you advance, the more you think I'm very fallen. I'm very hopeless. I'm not a good devotee. That's a sign that you're a good devotee that, because you're thinking I'm not a devotee. And so somebody who's really a good devotee, they think I'm very fallen, I'm hopeless. They're actually good devotees. But the person thinks I'm a good devotee, <laughs> they're useless. <laughs> they're not very good at all. The one who's thinking I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good devotee, they're, they're the useless people. They don't do anything. <laughs> so it's like that. You see, we see things the, the other way. <laughs> so it's good you're thinking like that. It's very good. So I will keep on hearing and so you, in some you time keep I hope hearing? there is a yeah. statement. Yeah. I really hope. Because really felt if without faith is Govinda is not I mean, you know. And the more we hear true. the more we hear, the more no. we realize we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. Gurdav, I feel like I really don't know enough because why am I giving a place to fear over Lord Krishna? That means I don't, I haven't heard enough, or I haven't heard, uh, how do you say, it? not uh, purely, I mean, with attention, because otherwise, how could this slip my mind? Mm. Yeah. I'm just coming up with so many reasons that. Why am I giving fear the place and I'm not giving enough faith to the Lord? I'm just, you know, thinking about that. But no, Gurdiv, you're right. I will continue to listen and hear. Every day I do that and I will continue, Gurdiv. And um, I really pray and hope with your mercy, somehow, somehow, okay. nothing really, nothing comes in between of my faith. Okay. Really? Good. Please. Okay, Vaishnavi. Vaishnavi has a question. What is your question, Vaishnavi? Hare Krishna, Vaishnavi. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prakula Prabhupada. Guru Maharaj, I was thinking uh, um, Muchukunda, uh, he. He was, uh, he was doing devotional service in his previous birth, right? Not in this birth. And he didn't die in, in this birth. I was wondering about it, Guru Maharaj. And I was also thinking, Kala Yavana. Yavana means, is it, is, are they from Europe, Guru Maharaj? Yavanas, like that? <laughs> but are they from <laughs> Europe? <laughs> well, this was 5,000 years ago. But, okay. uh, so, you know, I don't know when the Yavanas all went there to Europe, but maybe. <laughs> you see, the, the, the Yavanas came from India and they went to Europe. And then maybe some of them came back again. It's not that the Yavanas were always there, but they came, they came from India and they, they went there. When Parasurama was killing the Kshatriyas, many of them ran away. And the Kshatriyas, they went there to Europe and Turkey and these places. And uh, Kalayavana, what, oh, what, what, what were you saying? What was the first question? Muchukunda, whether he did devotional service in this lifetime or in his previous lifetime, and he didn't die for a long time, right? Uh, uh, 
yeah like that because we studied that uh, krishna is telling like because you did devotional service in your previous lifetime something like that right guru maharaj aha uh-huh. yeah well he was born in the family of the line coming from ikshvaku right as a kshatriya as mochi kunda did it tell about his previous life i don't know that it told about his previous life but it said in this life he did fight he, and he'd been resting for a long time he'd been resting for some many years because it was it was not kali yuga it was a, another yuga treta yuga or dwapara dwapa dwapara yuga so he was rest he'd been resting for a long time and uh, he well he, krishna gave him the blessing that in the next life but he said in this life he had to go and do penance to make up for all the killing he did because he did a lot of killing as a kshatriya fighting for the demigods and the dem against the demons so he killed a lot of demons so he had to do some atonement to purify himself and he was going to do that and then krishna told him in his next life he would take birth as a brahmana as a vaishnava brahmana and in that way he and, and then in that li- next life he then he would that would be his last birth and then he would go back to godhead but he he had to first of all you know atone for all the killing he'd done when he was okay. huh? so fighting against all the demons he he killed many demons he has to do atonement so he went to do that and next life he, after that next birth he was going to take birth in a family of devotees as a brahmana and that would be good for him but i don't know about his previous life okay shri devi gorangi has a question hari krishna guru maharaj please accept my humble obeisances all glories to shri la prabhu pad uh, guru maharaj my question is how do we uh, how do we make chanting and devotional life work for us in the face of uh, difficulty or adversity like for example um, my son is now admitted in hospital you know i was sharing with guru maharaj in the isopanishad class about my son and now he's admitted in hospital and i myself am facing some health challenges so how do i keep keep up my spirits and uh, you know it worked for me before but this time around i'm finding myself being a bit uh, weak and uh, my chanting is not so good uh, because of sometimes um, a, a lot of traveling up and down uh, the hospital and the home so uh, how do i how do i make devotional life work for me uh, uh, the ben- uh, give a spiritual benefit to me how do i stay stay on top of things in 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 uh, with my devotion how do i make all this add up to the meaning it's supposed to be like i'm a devotee i'm supposed to be above be not like not like other people so how do i uh, how do i do that guru maharaj thank you so much guru maharaj uh-huh. yes uh, certainly uh, difficulties come and these things they're very stressing demanding family members difficulties health problems so a devotee will view the difficulties particularly health issues and old age a devotee will see these things that they are like an impetus for our devotional service that they they inspire us to do more devotional service because we understand our situation in this world is not eternal and so we become very conscious about our temporary nature here in this world and at any time we may have to leave this world we may have to leave the body and so we're very conscious about it and when we get some sickness or old age and we feel old age and difficulties coming and so many problems it's an opportunity this is a time krishna is we have to take more shelter of krishna 
we have to increase our chanting and hearing and you have to you have to let go of so many other things maybe which you're doing and you just have to do what you have to do you have to see things what's important you know maybe you can't keep up all the things which you were usually doing and you have to just do the important things you know maybe all your pujas and prayers and chanting maybe you can't do all these things but you you have to do the important things you have to of course take care for your son and you have to try to keep yourself krishna conscious you know you have to know also your limitation what can you do you know what can you do so it's not so easy you know you're not a young person anymore you have to understand your limitations what you can do and what you can't do you, it, don't try to overdo it mm -hmm. yeah sometimes you just have to let go and you just you just can't do everything that which people want you to do so we have to just say oh i'm sorry i just can't manage it mm. It's difficult. Which which of your son is in the hospital? Oldest son? Sri Devi? Hare Krishna? Uh, my son uh, Hari Ram, the, the old the older son. Oh. The older of the two sons, yes. He's oh. He's in hospital under observation because of his uh, tremendous weight loss. Oh, because unable of... to eat uh, because he was unable to eat and the tremendous weight loss. So he's going through therapy, cognitive behavior therapy. He will undergo. At the moment, he's on medication uh, to help uh, open up some brain pathways to to try to see if he's able to eat. He's still on the milk. He's he's drinking milk and uh, water and. Um, milk and water and um, some juice oh. no solid food no he's solid food he is not able to eat there's a psychological blockage like that in the brain of not enabling him to swallow something like that like a, like a disorder you know oh. like a like a like a like a health something to do with with mental 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 health oh, depression like like a de like a depression Oh. Like that, uh, the causes are not clear because uh, he had a happy childhood. Uh, I mean, I'm his mother, and um, uh, it could it could be linked to he, he he's being very act, very uh, active in childhood, like um, uh, what you call a, the hyperactivity type, not able to complete a task. So that's what today we had a long session with the with the doctor. So she was interviewing us and then uh, trying to trace back to his childhood what could be the, the cause of his becoming like this today. Mm. So from our conversation, uh, she gathered that uh, he um, has got the attention deficit, some kind of attention deficit. So like that. Anyway, he has uh, asked for the Bhagavad Gita and I've uh, given him the Bhagavad Gita. I've given him uh, a nice card I made for him with Srila Prabhupada on the card and uh, mantra, Hare Krishna Ma mantra with, uh, with uh, Radha Shama Sundar and, uh, and the Lord Narasimha on one card. Uh, he returned books he had read, but he's keeping the card and, and the Bhagavad Gita. I asked him, uh, did you read? And he said, uh, we, can, we cannot see, see him. We, he, we can only talk to him on the phone, with the pay phone. But today they allowed us to have a glimpse of him. Uh, they brought him they brought him and then we could uh, he could sit there with us and then they took him back and then uh, he, he said that he cannot understand he said I said uh, I told him uh, I don't know whether I said correctly but I told him read in the middle read anywhere you like read the philosophy anywhere uh, don't read uh, sequentially you might find it very difficult is that good Guru Maharaj I told him just read just pick a random page <laughs> Okay. Mm. Mm. 
Mm. So, yes, very trying situations, these things, very difficult for you. So you have to just take shelter of Krishna, Sri Devi. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. You just have to, you have Krishna for your shelter, you know. There will always be obstacles, there's always problems every day in life. You know, we have so many problems. Mm -hmm. So, we, we have to meet what we don't want. The things which mm -hmm. we don't want, these are the things which come. And what we want, we don't get. Mm -hmm. So, this is the nature of material world. Mm -hmm. We just have to take shelter of Lord Krishna and accept mm -hmm. that Krishna, I'm you. Even you handle me roughly or make me mm -hmm. broken hearted, mm -hmm. but still you're my worshipful Lord unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya's prayer is very relevant, you know. Mm -hmm. The final prayer. Yes, good mother. Mm. Thank you, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. I'm very, very grateful to for Guru Maharaj's uh, advice and guidance. I pray to to be more surrendered to Lord Krishna. I pray to be more surrendered to Guru Maharaj. I pray at the dust of your lotus feet, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your mercy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Sri Devi. Jolene Mataji has a question. Jolene. Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Today uh, we receive uh, one sh uh, a clip a day on Srila Prabhupada's uh, quote. Today's quote uh, give, uh, makes me think a little bit too much. Uh, but it's not important. But it makes me think. There are four classes of men um, lazy intelligent, busy intelligent lazy fool and busy fool so first class man is lazy intelligent so so i i, I got a little bit confused uh, on the various category of classes of men lazy intelligent busy intelligent lazy fool and busy fool so when i check uh, what is this uh, quote all about so uh, Prabhupada continues this conversation saying that uh, just like you see the high court judges, they are very lazy and most intelligent. So they are lazy intelligent. They are doing everything very soberly. Then you have the busy intelligent. Uh, and the third class, lazy, full, lazy, at the same time, full. That's what Prabhupada said. And the fourth class, busy, full. The busy, full is very dangerous. So all these people, they are busy, even in this country, everywhere, all over the world, not this country or that country, they have discovered this horseless carriage, very busy, horns, horns, honk, honk, this way, this way, that way. So those are busy full. So I'm confused, uh, sorry, I'm just thinking, what is the difference between busy intelligent and busy full? Well, busy fool, <laughs> very dangerous person, busy fool, right? Yeah, 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 that's the one. Because, well, they're fools, they're foolish people, so they can do any stupid thing. And they're very busy, it means they're doing a lot of things, so anything can happen and anything can go wrong, just like we have bombs and we have so many dangerous devices. And so they're, they're, they're busy fools, they could do something stupid and mm -hmm. it could bring danger to the whole world. Mm. And, and how do they differ, differ from busy, people who are busy intelligent? And so busy intelligent people, are, well, they're, they're intelligent, so they think about life, they think about 
the purpose of life, what we should do, and what, how to do it. And people, they, they may work, they're working hard to achieve it. Right? They're trying, they're working, they're doing things, they're going around, working, but, you know, the, la the lazy, intelligent person, he gets other people to do it. He doesn't do it himself, doesn't do everything. He knows he can't do everything, but he gets other people to do things. You know. Okay. That's that's his intelligence. Archana. Yes, yes, you you have to mute some people, you know, you have to mute some people because yes, they're talking. I, I just did it. So, l l lazy, intelligent, he will get other people to do everything. He will save his energy. And then he will utilize other people. And active, intelligent, busy, intelligent, you know, he's a hard-working person. <laughs> but he's working very hard, he's working hard, he'll get tired working all the time. He's intelligent, but... Still, he's, he's busy. It's better if you can get other people, if you engage other people. Mm. That, that's more intelligent. You can't do everything yourself. Okay, now I understand uh, Guru Maharaj. Um, example of lazy intelligent, uh, you know, sp uh, maybe uh, politicians. And an example of people who are busy intelligence are like uh, scientists, correct, Guru Maharaj? Well, it will vary. You know, some politicians, they are also very busy. Not all mm. politicians sit around, you know. Mm. Okay. Some politicians, they run, you know, they're very busy. They run around getting support, going all over the country, getting votes and talking and giving their speeches. But lazy, intelligent person, he will sit in the office, he's got a team, and he gets it, he's got all the team working. They do all the work and they come and report to him. Okay, thank you Guru Maharaj. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll stop here today. Thank you very much, Archana, for translation. Thank, thank you. Thank Guru. all the devotees for their questions and for participation. And we'll see you on Friday night. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.